Wherever wheat or rye are grown, particularly in warm climates and with intensive farming methods, leaf rust or brown rust is likely to be present. In economic terms, leaf rust is one of the most important diseases in cereal farming. Leaf rust pustules, the uridinia, get their typical brick red color from the uridinia spores that mature here. They are uridinia spores of the fungus Puccinia recondita, whose forma specialis triticae specifically affects wheat. The uridinia spores are produced asexually. Like the cells of the mycelium, each uridinia spore has two nuclei. During maturation, the spore walls thicken and take on their characteristic structure and color. The mature uridinia spores are easily detached and carried to other wheat leaves by the wind. Here they remain until dew or rain wets the leaf, followed by a warm night. Under these optimal conditions, the uridinia spores germinate rapidly. The germ tube grows toward a stoma, a slit-like opening in the leaf. Over the stoma, an adhesive organ now forms. From this apressorium, a penetration hypha grows into the cavity beneath the stoma. In the cavity, the tip of the hypha dilates. From this vesicle, new hyphae emerge, forming a mycelium that grows between the plant cells. With small spherical organs, the hostoria, the parasite now extracts the nutrients it needs for its own development from the surrounding plant cells but the infected host cells stay alive. In warm weather, it takes just one week following infection for a new uridinium to break open on the leaf surface. This pustule in turn releases countless uridinia spores, which the wind spreads through the crop and far beyond it, often over entire regions, countries, even continents. From the moment of infection, through formation of the mycelium inside the leaf, the asexual development of uridinia spores, to the bursting open of new uridinia, followed by spore distribution, the reproductive cycle of the uridinia spores is repeated several times while the wheat is growing. This explains the exponential increase in the severity of infection, particularly when rust-prone varieties are grown during warm weather. Leaf rust epidemics usually develop only after head emergence or after flowering. At this stage, when the grain is starting to fill, the wheat plants are heavily dependent on the flow of assimilates from the upper leaves. The tissues where this flow of assimilates originates are termed the source. The region where assimilates are consumed is called the sink. The parasitic fungus actively diverts the assimilates to itself. Now the parasite is the sink, to the detriment of grain fill in the head. Toward the end of the vegetative period, on rust-infected wheat leaves, and usually on the underside of the leaf, a second spore type forms. With these teliospores, the sexual stage in the life cycle of Puccinia recondita begins. A young, still immature teliospore. It consists of two cells. The cells each contain a pair of sexually compatible nuclei, that is, they're dikaryotic. The two nuclei carry different genetic information. In the process of maturation of the teliospores, each pair of nuclei merges to form a single diploid nucleus, a nucleus with a double chromosome set. 
following this nuclear fusion, or karyogamy, the spore wall thickens and becomes dark colored. Usually this maturation process of the teliospores is completed by harvest time. On stubble residues, the teliospores survive the dormancy period, the fall, and the winter. In spring, and especially in regions with warm climates, the teliospores germinate. The germ tube bends, forming a metabasidium. The diploid nucleus migrates into it. In two reduction divisions, or meiosis, the genetic information is recombined, resulting in four haploid nuclei. They're in two pairs, belonging to the plus and minus mating types, respectively. Now the metabasidium divides into four cells. On each of them, a sterigma emerges. The nuclei migrate through it into the developing basidiospores. As a complete entity, this fungal organ is designated a basidium. Similar basidia are found in most mushrooms. For this reason, they're classified together with the rusts and smuts as basidiomycetes. The mature basidiospores of Puccinia recondita are forcibly ejected. However, these haploid basidiospores of leaf rust do not infect the young wheat plants because Puccinia recondita is a heterocious parasite which requires an appropriate alternate host to complete its life cycle. The primary such host for leaf rust of wheat is thalictrum or meadow rue. A young meadow rue plant is infected by a basidiospore. After some time, a fungal organ called a pycnium or spermagonium develops. If the infecting basidiospore was of the plus mating type, all of the cells in this pycnium are likewise of the plus type. Other pycnia of the minus mating type may also develop, originating from a basidiospore of this second mating type. In the interior of the pycnia, minute haploid pycneospores are produced. The pycneospores are exuded in a sticky drop of honeydew. The honeydew lures insects to which the pycneospores adhere. It's primarily in this way that pycneospores of the plus type are transferred to pycnia of the minus type and vice versa. The pycneospores thus transferred are taken up by special hyphae, the receptive hyphae. The cytoplasm of the two partner cells merges. This is plasmogamy, the beginning of fertilization. The nucleus of the pycneospore migrates into the receptive hypha, and subsequently, inside strands of mycelium, deep into the mesophyll of the meadow rue's leaf. Here, the nucleus reproduces itself many times over. Two nuclei of each mating type pair up. These cells, which are now dikaryotic, become parent cells for the esiospores of leaf rust. The esiospores develop in the form of chains. They are produced within an open cup-like organ, the esium. After being released, the esiospores are carried by the wind back to the other host, the cereal. This is where the dikaryotic esiospore germinates. The infection leads to the development of dikaryotic mycelium, from which in turn, dikaryotic uridiniospores and later on in the year teliospores originate. The dikaryotic phase ends with the basidiospores which are once again haploid. So the complete life cycle of leaf rust includes five spore stages. Puccinia recondita is macrocyclic.
With respect to epidemic development, the uridinia spores are the most important spore stage. They alone are responsible for the very rapid spread of disease in the crop and far beyond it. Carried by the major global wind streams, these uridinia spores reach every corner of the earth. Rye also is often affected by leaf rust. In fact, in many regions, leaf rust is the most important disease of rye. Rye leaf rust is caused by the Forma specialis recondita of Puccinia recondita. In order to complete its life cycle, this fungus also needs an appropriate alternate host, asperifoliate plants like Anchusa or Echium. Leaf rust of barley can likewise cause significant yield losses. The uridinia are typically very small. Barley leaf rust is caused by Puccinia hordii. Stem rust caused by Puccinia graminis is another important cereal disease, especially in warm climates. Stem rust is also known as black rust because of the black telia filled with telia spores. These telia form on stems and leaf sheaths at the end of the vegetation period. The alternate host in this case is common barberry. The characteristic feature of stripe or yellow rust is that the bright yellow uridinia are arranged in rows. Stripe rust is caused by Puccinia striiformis. In contrast to leaf rust, stripe rust prefers a moist, cool climate. It infects cereals and above all wheat early in the year, long before emergence of the heads. A warning for the farmer are nest-like lighter areas in the field, foci of early stripe rust infection. From here, the epidemic will spread throughout the crop. In advanced stages, the heads are commonly affected. Toward the end of the vegetation period, stripe rust produces, in addition to uridinia spores, telia spores, from which later basidia spores develop. However, there is no known alternate host for these basidia spores so they have no known biological function. The uridinia spores survive by infecting volunteers in fall and then passing the winter as a mycelium or as uridinia in the young seed. Being a biotroph, stripe rust, like the other rusts, has to have a green host plant. When the days start to get warmer again, stripe rust also awakes to renewed activity. Its reduced life cycle has evidently facilitated its adaptation to cool and humid maritime climates. Thus, for rust fungi also, keeping the wheel of biological adaptation constantly in motion is essential for survival.